This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, hello friends today's case is about a 50 year old lady uh, she has coloboma of the iris a large brown cataract of grade 4 grade 5 and to complicate the situation the patient also has a small cornea and the antechamber is quite shallow and she is one eyed the challenges which i need to deal with are a very large and a hard nucleus and predominantly the main issue is going to be the lack of space there's no space for manipulation inside i'm basically dealing with a large nucleus in a small eye i'm using a soft shell technique for protecting the corneal endothelium and this is my 2.2 mm posterior limbal uh, incision i'm stretching the pupil by using y hook for better pupillar expansion I'm aware of the fact that my rexus needs to be sufficiently large so that the nucleus management becomes a little bit less complicated uh, because I'm dealing with a large uh, nucleus and I feel this rexus is around 5 mm and looks to be all right hydrodissection is being performed very carefully to avoid over distension of the capsular bag very little amount of fluid is used and immediately followed by a gentle decompression this is repeated at different sites moving on to phaco emulsification of the nucleus i'm making an initial small groove so that i can bury my phaco tip deep into the nucleus substance to get a firm grip and this would help me to achieve a successful chop in this dense nucleus the two halves are separated i proceed to perform subsequent chops in each of the hemi nucleus after getting the grip i score the nucleus by moving the chopper vertically down and then laterally separate to at multiple levels going down subsequently to ensure that the posterior plate is separated Moving on to the next fragment I'm repeating the same vertical chop with lateral separation but during this maneuver I could feel something unusual has happened I felt something it snapped I could feel it Let us check out what happened As I'm trying to laterally separate the posterior plate of the fragment the rexus has snapped at the 6 o'clock quadrant now this is a really an uncomfortable situation to be in a large hard nucleus with very little space to maneuver and now to top it all i have a torn rexus the fragment which was engaged in the tip is pulled anteriorly into the entry chamber and i am emulsifying the nucleus at this moment i am thinking how to go ahead next should i continue phaco and i'm also seriously considering should i convert to sics Whenever I'm having difficulty in making a decision or I'm not sure what would be the next step my strategy always has been to just keep injecting over inside the eye well this is my way of buying some time which should help me in decision making and hopefully I make the right one in this case since some amount of nucleus was already chopped and had multiple fragments present I decided to continue with phaco because i thought it was manageable and it would be less traumatic here in this fragment i'm finding it tough to separate the posterior plate i'm manipulating at the base of the fragment to separate them laterally i don't want to exert any pressure because i'm worried about the torn rexus hence i'm trying to use as minimal force as possible to deal with this situation Finally I achieve the separation by using the phaco energy itself at the base. Well the problem of continuing phaco with a torn rexus is that the tear can extend posteriorly across the equator to involve the posterior capsule which can result in a drop nucleus. To prevent this our goal should be to maintain a constant depth of entry chamber throughout the procedure since a sudden deepening or shallowing of the entry chamber can extend the tear posteriorly. After each fragment removal I am putting in OVD to ensure 
less trauma to the endothelium. Because the rexus is torn, I am emulsifying the fragments at a much anterior plane than I usually do. As I am emulsifying the fragments, my focus is predominantly on the torn rexus edge, ensuring that it is not extending. Minimizing the turbulence inside the chamber will help in minimizing the trauma uh, to the endothelium to a certain extent. The parameters are such that the lens chatter is minimal and we need to ensure that once the nucleus is stuck to the tip, it has to just dance around the tip not leaving it at all until it is totally emulsified. I am using my chopper slightly above the level of the fragment to prevent the fragment from flying around anteriorly and hitting the endothelium. At the end, I was relieved having completed the toughest part of the procedure. The cortex is then easily peeled off, the bag is formed with viscoelastic and a single piece in trochlear lens is placed in the capsule bag. The 6mm optic appears quite big relative to the size of the capsular bag, emphasizing the smallness of the capsular bag. The OVD both in front and behind the lens is removed. The intraocular lens is oriented in such a way that the haptics are at right angles to the plane of the tone rexus. Eventually, we could manage to come out of a tough situation quite satisfactorily. Four hours later, significant corneal edema in the superior hemisphere is seen. Well, this was expected as the emulsification was done in a much more anterior plane resulting in mechanical trauma to the endothelium. On the fourth day, the cornea clears off a little bit, the edema has significantly decreased and by the eleventh day, the cornea is sparkling. Eventually, the patient did have a good visual outcome. And the patient was happy and she's back on the job. Now looking back at this case, you know, the rexus margin did tear because I was manipulating a large bulky nucleus in a relatively small bag with a flimsy, probably a pathological anti-capsule. The fundamental problem in this case was the absence of any space in the bag, so any manipulation like lateral separation was going to impart a significant stress on the flimsy anti-capsule and eventually it did snap. Well, if I get a second chance in such a case, I would do certain things differently. I would tackle this case by addressing the core problem, which is of space. I would probably resort to doing a four quadrant technique with very deep and wide trenches which would ensure that I have created a significant space by coring out the central nucleus within the bag and then further manipulations like lateral separation would cause less stress on the rexus margin and probably you could have saved the rexus from getting torn in such situation. Well, I learned a lot from this case and I hope you found this presentation useful. Thank you for watching.